Hello, Bees Bladers. Welcome back and welcome newcomers to the channel. We're gonna check out a Dark Bolt Designs with their proprietary bolt lock. We're gonna take it apart, see how it operates. Thank you very much to the channel member and subscriber that sent this in anonymously and asked me to check it out and said, hey, if you're able to, could you take it apart? And I'm like, you know what? We haven't done a disassembly in a long time. We are overdue for a disassembly. This is the Dark Bolt Design Stratus. And I haven't even showed it yet. Let's try it again. This is the Dark Bolt Design Stratus. Would you look at it? Just look at it. And there's that proprietary lock we're getting ready to check out. And looking up here, oh yes, it has very, very good jimping. The jimping is 10 out of 10. Absolutely no complaints about the jimping. It's wrapped all the way around. This is a multiple deployment knife. You can open it with the flipper tab. You can use the button. You can use the top flipper. You can reverse flick it, or you can thumb flick it with the thumb studs. So this is going to fit your fancy. It's a slimmer knife. And look at this. It has a titanium milled pocket clip. The clip, thumb studs, and hardware are all titanium. So if you like a little bit of titanium in your life, now this these handles are smooth G10. However, these little notches, these grooves, or the milling, if you will, are put in the exact right spot. It's obvious why they put them there. It gives you very, very good grip on the knife. You ready to see this blade? Pow, right in the kisser. Yeah, look at that bad boy. This is a very mean yet sleek looking CPM 20 CV steel, baby. And look at that. I love the way that swedge comes down and it all blends in together. Very nice looking 20 CV. That's what I'm talking about. And it does have room for sharpening. So you're set to go there and going all the way down. We've already seen, and it has T8 hardware, which is very nice. Very, very nice. And you know what? I'm telling you right now, the one thing that is just outstanding about this knife is the slim design, how well it fits in my hand. The ergonomics are done very well. And as far as your dimensions, this bad boy from tip to tip is 7.63 inches. Closed, it's 4.45 inches. It has a 3.2 inch blade, captive pivot, ceramic ball bearings. And they also have another version of this with a sheep's foot blade on it. Now look at this. We have good lockup right in the middle. And as far as our centering, look at that. The blade is dead centered. And as for our fit, Left and right, it is rock solid. Up and down, it is rock solid. So the fit, finish, everything about it are great. And let's see how sharp it is right from the factory. Oh, it is. Oh, oh, oh. it is dreamy, dreamy sharp. Oh my goodness, yes, it has a laser edge on it. And while we're down here on the table, let me give you a couple quick size comparisons. How about the Spyderco Para 3 and the Spyderco Paramilitary 2? By the way, I hope you're having a fantastic day and I hope you're in the mood for a little bit of disassembly because it's very, very interesting. So you can see it is a full size knife and I have a couple more. Of course, we got to show the QSP Penguin because everybody should have a penguin, right? And then, you know, I figured we'd get out a little bit of Kaiser action. We got the Kaiser Escort going on. And you know, I have a lot of knives, not a whole lot of knives with this particular blade style. I'm loving the blade style on this. And for size in the hand, my hand is four inches from here to here, three and a half from here to here, and from the bottom of my palm to the tip of my middle finger is seven and a quarter. And let's see what it looks like in my hand. Yeah, look at that. Large hands, XL hands, you have plenty of room. There's no hot spots at all. Even when I give it the B squeeze, if I'm giving it the B squeeze, there's a couple things that I do notice. I can go like this and I'll feel a little bit of flex of the G10 inside like that, but it's not an issue. I don't think it's hurting any integrity whatsoever. And this isn't what I would call a heavy duty. Yeah, I said duty. It's not a heavy duty use knife. And then the other thing would be, I would prefer that these edges be chamfered off just a little bit more. They are kind of abrupt, so I do feel them, but they're not hateful. And in the classic grip like this, this jimping just locks my thumb. Oh, it just locks it so well. That's how I love jimping to be done. So I'm if I'm doing Doing some push cuts with this, I'm not slipping on the jipping. The reverse grip on this is equally as comfortable. I have no issues with that whatsoever. So we're good to go on both grips. Just if that was softened up just a little bit, it would make the handles that much better. So let's check out all the ways to deploy this bad boy. First off, I will say, I wish there was jimping up here on the flipper tab. That definitely leaves me wanting, but given it the light switch, you can snap it out, it comes out with authority. And that button, look at this, there's two ways to close it. I like this option. You have the button, which pushes in, if you look here, 
The button pushes the liner completely out of the way, which is very, very cool. Or you can shut it, like if you forget, like I've done, if you forget that it has that button, you can just shut it like you like to, or you can use the button to open it. You just have to give, give it a little bit of wrist action, kind of to fling it out. The button wouldn't be my preferred way unless you're really giving it giving it a little bit of zing, and it does have good acoustics when you open it with the button. But I imagine with a little more practice, that button would be an easier way to open the knife. But my preference would be the thumb stud. I really like the thumb studs on this. They grab my hand, they stick out just the right amount. The smoothness of this knife, as far as shutting, it's smooth, it, sh it shuts very nicely. And I will say the button you do have to have fully depressed. And don't be depressed, you have to have it fully depressed to close the knife. I'm able to reverse flick it using my index finger, just giving it a little bit of point in action and it comes right out. So the, but using my middle finger, there's not quite as much room back here to get underneath to do the reverse flick. I mean, I can't really use my middle finger. I more so have to use the side of my index finger if I want to reverse flick it, but it does work. The front flip is a little awkward for me because if you look here, when I go to front flip it, my, my finger is right behind the flipper tab. So if I'm gonna front flip, I have to know that I have my hand back far enough so that that flipper tab misses my finger. You don't have to be that far back. See here, I'm just barely not touching it. It's totally missing my hand when I'm doing that. Over the top flipping is very easy because of that really good jimping. So this is definitely a fidget king when it comes to the different ways of deploying the knife. And I do appreciate that it has a good solid detent that gives it a really good snap when it comes flying out. So let's do a quick disassembly of this bad boy and see what it looks like on the inside. All right, let's dive in here and see what it looks like on the inside side and clean it out just a little bit. So I had to find this out the hard way. I couldn't figure out how to take it apart because this button is screwed into the liner lock. And I was like, well, how do I get around that? So what I did the first time is I took the outside off, took the blade off, and then I held the button while I rotated the liner around in circles until it came off. And then secondarily, I'm gonna show you how I did it the easy way. The first thing I'm gonna do is I got my little Nipix pliers and I have a moistened with a little bit of alcohol. I have a just a piece of cloth and I'm gonna get that cloth and put on the inside and I'm going to go over here and grab a hold of that little button and to slowly turn it around counterclockwise. And then once you've loosened it, you can actually unscrew this with your fingers and this will solve all of your problems. That's what it looks like. And I'll put that bad boy up here so I don't lose track of it. Now the rest of it is a cakewalk. And by the way, all of the stuff that I use for disassemblies, it's all listed down in the description and in the comment section. Make you like these, these right here I recommend. These are like 20 bucks. And then these right here are getgoodscrew.com. I don't think I have them linked, but they, they, they make these which are just unbelievable. But we'll get in here and take this apart. It shouldn't take very long. It's not a complicated design once you've figured out how in the world to get that. <laughs> I mean, I was like, how do I take this thing apart? But you know, I'll do it so you don't have to. Now I took it apart from the show side, which means I took the entire pivot out. I would suggest after you after you take this button out, don't do what I just did. Take it apart from the clip side. It'll be a lot easier on you. And let's go over, go over here and take this bad boy out now that I've taken the whole pivot out. But you get the point. We'll go ahead and take these scales off over here and put my screws up here so I don't lose track of them. And while I'm at it, I think you only have to take out, and I'm gonna go ahead and take the blade. Yeah, I made a mess of this. But no, we'll just go ahead and take this uh, clip off and just keep going. It's not as clean as I, as I would have liked to show you, but you already know. I told you, take it off from the clip side and you won't have this problem. So you only have to take the back screw out to disassemble it, and this is what it looks like on the inside relatively clean, you know, we'll clean that off here with a little bit of alcohol. And here's a look at your caged ceramic ball bearings. Love me ceramic ball bearings. And you can see right here that we have an internal stop pin, which is very nice, very, very nice. Let me go ahead and get these bad boys out and we'll get them cleaned up and then get it put back together. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So I just have some 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol that I sprayed on my rag here. And you know, this is basically how you clean most of your knives. A lot of them aren't gonna have that extra button, which makes it, you know, just a little more challenging, which, well, that's the reason I did it for you so you don't have to figure it out, right? But I put almost too much alcohol. You know, you can have too much alcohol, right? 
But I'm just going to clean this out, and yeah, this should be pretty, pretty good. It wasn't really dirty to begin with. I like I like the looks of this blade. I'm really digging this blade. And as you can see here, if I didn't mention it before, you do have a place where you can put a small lanyard on the back right here, in that barrel spacer. Now let's go ahead before it. Now see, I didn't forget. I, st I haven't done one of these in quite a while. I still didn't forget the KPL Heavy. Uh, I, I am an affiliate to KPL. I have 10% discount code to KPL Knife Pivot Lube. So uh, I really like this stuff. I use it when I disassemble my knives. I put one one drop right here of KPL Heavy, maybe just a little bit trail going around, and that's about all I need for that. And now I'm gonna get my pivot, a little bit of, where's my, where do, okay, who took my pivot? There's my pivot. Now this pivot is not a captive pivot as far as I can tell. I didn't have any problems the two times that I took it apart, but it's not captive, which is kind of a surprise. But if it has, if you have a little bit of, a uh, little bit of tension on it, you're not gonna have an issue. Now here's KPL Original, and KPL stands for nice pivot lube. And you know, are you having a great day? If you're driving down the road right now, just listening, you know, for a familiar voice, then be careful. You can always watch the details later. <laughs> and don't forget, every Friday night, Bees Blades live at the Hive. Oh, right. Come and hang out with us. We do a pizza check. We talk about knives. We talk about all kinds of everything that comes up. Here's my little my little uh, ceramic bearings. I'm going to put those in there and just give, they're going to, the open side of the ceramic bearings I have facing the blade, putting a little bit on there. And, you know, it's easy to overdo it on the KPL. You don't need too much. And I'm just going to spread some of that on the inside and around. Spread the love, baby. But yeah, come and hang out with us. We have a lot of fun. It is it is just a blast. Mrs. Bees comes down. The dog comes down. The cat has been making appearances. The cat almost got knocked out of his spot by the dog. But I try to get him on at least once every live stream. At least I'm trying my best. And I'll just put a little bit on here. Clean that little bit off. Now everything is lubed back up. It's all nice and clean. Now we can put it back together. Ooh, I'm getting a little better in my old age. I saw a piece rolled off and I didn't even notice it. So we have all that. And let's see, do I have everything where it needs to be? That's the question. Are we lined up? Oh yeah, you hear that nice snap? I love it when I get that nice snap, baby. And let's put this pivot back in and I think we'll be rocking and rolling. So other than, other than that one screw that I didn't know how to take out, and, and by the way, when I had it apart before, if you take it apart and you're still connected by that, by that uh, little pin, you can simply just hold your finger on the pin and rotate the liner around in a circle to, uh, to unscrew it. But it just simply screws in a few times into that liner and that's how, that's how it works. So it's, it's a simple design, it's ingenious. Uh, I think it works very well. My finger doesn't hit it in any way, so I didn't have any issues with that. So I finger tightened it. Now let me get my little nipix and just put a little extra tighten on it. And you know, it, I wish I would have thought of this. <laughs> I didn't know how it was put together. And I'm, I'm just being careful and taking my time and going slow because I don't want to scratch it up. But finger tight, I think is about all it needs and it doesn't move and look at this. It goes all the way across, and when you look on the inside, you will see, you know that this is screwed in enough. Once it is just barely past the liner lock, you know you're good to go. Now, let me put the rest of the screws back in this. And as far as screws, it's pretty nice. It only There's only a couple that you have to take out to have this thing completely, uh, you know, completely done. So we have one back here. Put that bad boy in, and that's done. And now one in, this, in the pocket clip, and then we've got this disassembled and Hopefully that saved you some trouble so you didn't have to work <laughs> try to figure that out. Now, let's see. Are we solid? Oh, yeah. It's solid. Left and right, up and down. Let's go back to the big screen. So there is the Dark Bolt Design Stratus. I do like this knife. I like the button. The more I use it, the more the button makes sense. And the flipper tab is not hateful whatsoever. You know, I'm just big on my jumping on the flipping, right? But I do like the fidgetability. I do like... I, I like most about this knife. It is a very good design. The button, when I'm holding my hand, the button just disappears right inside there. So I don't have the opportunity to depress that button. I would have to be holding this knife very weirdly 
to depress that button while using it. So the button on the button lock is not an issue for me, and I don't consider this a hard use knife to begin with. But I do like it. I think the bolt lock is pretty cool, and I'm glad that I'm able to save you guys some trouble as far as taking it apart to clean it if you get it nice and dirty. But tell me what you think about it. Did you enjoy the disassembly? Do you want another one? Leave me a comment, tell me all about it. Go watch this video, you're really gonna enjoy that. And until I see you again in the lives or the chats or the hive stream on Friday night, remember, live life in the present, keep a Band-Aid handy, and don't cut yourself.